So you can read the first uh, question. There is an infinite line current is located at y is equal to 0 and z equal to 1. And then find out the magnetic field intensity at 0, 4, 0. So first of all, you try to represent the line current in a diagram. So this is your x-axis and this is your y-axis and z-axis. So when I say here y is fixed and z is fixed. So y is equal to 0 and z equal to 1. So the one which is varying is nothing but x. So you are going to have a line current which is parallel to the x. See here, there is one more component I have given. The value of z is equal to 1 which means that the line is parallel to the x and parallel to xy plane at a distance of 1 meter. So the meaning of z equal to 1 was parallel to xy plane at a distance of 1 meter. So how that line current is going to look like now? So this is an infinite line current, something like this. And the distance from the ground plane, you are going to get 1 meter. And where is observer located here? Observer is located at 0, 4, 0. Sorry, you can correct it as 0, 0, 4. Please make the correction it as 0, 0, 4. So somewhere the line current is located here, 0, 0, 4. So can you tell me what is the radial distance now? Radial distance means the distance from the source to observer. Good. So the value of rho is equal to 3. So this is carrying a current. So you can assume that I given some point also. You can assume the current is 10 amperes. You can correct the question. So there is an infinite line current of 10 amperes is located at y is equal to 0, comma z equal to 1. So we know that because of an infinite line current, the magnetic field intensity H is equal to I by 2 pi rho. So I is equal to 10 and rho will be equal to 3. So you can substitute that. So you are going to get the magnitude as pi by 3 pi. So can you tell me the direction? Assume that the current is flowing in the positive x direction. So the current is flowing along the positive x. So what will be the direction of the magnetic field at this particular point? The direction of magnetic field is current element cross product with the radial direction. Minus y. Good. So current is flowing in the positive x direction here. And what will be the radial direction here now? So moving from source to observer, you are moving in the positive z direction. So what is ax cross az? It will be minus a y. So you are going to get the magnetic field in the direction of negative y. So understood everybody here in this question. So first of all, you need to be very, you need to have a clarity on what is the radial direction. So radial direction means always represents the moving movement from the source to observer. So in this question, from source to observer, you are moving in the direction of Z. So that is your radial direction and the current is flowing in the X direction. So hence the magnetic field in, lies in negative Y direction. So we'll go to the next question. So there is a plane y is equal to 0, which carries a uniform current density of 30 milliampere per meter. So then find the magnetic field intensity at 1, 20, minus 2. So the plane which is carrying the sheet of current is nothing but y is equal to 0. So y is equal to 0 means you know that this is nothing but your xz plane. So for xz plane, the radial direction will be either positive y or negative y. It depends on the observer again. Now, whatever the given point I have given, is it lies above the sheet or below the sheet? 
you can have a look on the position of the observer will it lies on the top side of the sheet or bottom side of the sheet below why below no you can see here it's very simple to identify when you are moving on the top of the sheet you are going to increase in the direction of y so that means when you are moving on the top side y is positive when you are moving on the bottom side your y is negative so you can look at the observer is y is positive or negative here so y is positive so when y is positive the observer will be somewhere in the space which is above the plate that how you are going to find out so when you are moving on the upper side of the sheet your y will be positive and when you are moving on the bottom side your y will be negative so you can look at the observer position also in the observer position y is positive so which means that the observer is located on top side of the sheet so maybe somewhere here this is the position of observer so what is the far uh, you understood the point everyone will you agree everybody the observer is located on the upper surface upper side of the surface current yes now what is the formula we given the magnetic field intensity due to the surface current is equal to k by 2 into radial direction so everybody uh, you uh, reply what is the value of radial direction here in the chat box i want to answer from everyone what will be the radial direction in this case good so everybody i think you would have been understood what do you mean by radial direction now so radial direction means when you are moving from source to observer so you are moving in the positive y direction very good so you can directly substitute so i given the current density is nothing but 30 az cap milli ampere which means the 10 power minus 3 divided by 2 cross product with radial direction is ay cap so you can find out the magnitude of magnetic field sorry magnetic field intensity will be 15 into 10 power minus 3 is the magnitude and your az cross ay becomes negative ax so this is ampere per meter so this is your magnetic field intensity so now clear regarding the direction of magnetic fields everybody so straight away it's a simple formula the direction of magnetic field intensity will be cross product of current into radial you always keep this point in your mind you will never do any mistake regarding the direction so we'll go to the next question then yeah so the find the magnetic field intensity at a distance r from the center of the wire so the he has given the options so it is proportional to r when r less than a and proportional to 1 by r square something like that so a is the radius of the wire so what he has given this is your current carrying wire let us say and this is having a thicker conductor this is having a small um, some amount of thickness so he has given the radius of the conductor itself is nothing but a so he was asking what will be the magnetic field when you consider a point inside and when you consider a point outside so can you tell me anybody quickly what is answer when you consider a point within the conductor itself how the magnetic field will be so this is the same concept you can apply the coaxial cable what you have done in the coaxial cable you try to remember so this is your conductor which is having a radius of a so when you consider a point inside the conductor means you have to assume some imaginary loop something like this and having a radius of r d somebody is saying d 0 for r less than a and 1 by r square no cross check it 
so when you are inside the inner conductor good see yes so when you are inside the inner conductor once again the same logic what is the total enclosed current that will be the original current i into pi r square divided by pi a square so the total enclosed current will be i into r square by a square so using ampere's law what will happen integral h dot dl is equal to i enclosed so h into the line integral of your imaginary loop will be 2 pi r so that is equal to i r square by a square so you can say magnetic field is equal to i into r divided by 2 pi a square so this is the same thing what you have done in a coaxial cable within the inside of inner conductor so there also you have seen the magnetic field is proportional to r when the radius is lies within the inner conductor so the same thing you can do it for uh, other case also when r greater than a so a is the radius of the wire and a is your imaginary loop so can you tell me what is the total enclosed current in this case now can you answer everyone so what is the total enclosed current within this imaginary loop good i good now you can apply the ampere's law so what is that integral h dot dl is equal to i so h into the radius uh, circumference of the imaginary loop will be 2 pi r itself is equal to i so h is equal to i by 2 pi r so what is the conclusion you are getting so the magnetic field is inversely proportional to the distance when r greater than a so that's what you can see here when you are within the inner conductor the magnetic field is directly proportional to r and when you are outside the conductor the magnetic field is inversely proportional so option c is correct so here you need not to remember the formulas here right so you can straight away apply the ampere's law concept you need not to remember the formulas that's what i was saying before so any questions you have any uh, everyone so i will move on to the next one then so if at any point you have a doubt try to so uh, put your message in this uh, group so then i can understand so read the next question then so there is an 8 ampere current carrying wire lies on the entire positive y axis and on the positive x axis with the current flowing from the y axis to the x axis then find the magnetic field intensity at 3 comma 4 comma 0 so you try to represent it in a diagram so consider this is your x axis and this is your y axis so the current is flowing from the positive y axis and towards the x axis on the entire positive and entire positive Y and entire positive y axis as well as a positive x axis so it is not going on the negative y and negative x so how the current distribution is telling so it is flowing from the y axis to the x axis so the current is starting somewhere from the infinity and the moment once it reaches the origin it get diverted onto the x axis and here also it is flowing up to infinity and where is your observer located observer is located at 3 comma 4 comma 0 somewhere here Can you consider this problem as an infinite current element? Please reply here. Can I consider this configuration as an infinite line configuration? Yes. Others? no you should not consider it as an infinite current element the moment when i say an infinite current element means it should extend infinitely from positive y axis to the negative y axis or it can be from positive x axis to the negative x axis so but here how the current is flowing the current is starting from the infinity point on the y axis and it reaches the origin and it is trying to divert towards the x axis infinitely 
so you can consider this problem as two semi infinite current carrying wires so one semi infinite current carrying wire from infinity on the positive y axis to the zero and the another semi infinite axis from origin to the infinity point on the x axis can my assumption is correct right now you understood the difference so this i can consider it as a semi infinite so two semi infinite current carrying elements i can analyze the problem like that anybody is having question here is my assumption okay once you understood this then i will go ahead yes so right now what i will try to do i will find the magnetic field intensity at this point because of this current element one and i will find the magnetic field intensity due to second wire separately so finally the magnetic field intensity here is because of both one plus two first carrying element plus second carrying element so what i will try to do here the first part i will try to do it here and the second part i will leave it as assignment to you so let me consider the first part so the first part what it says this is your infinite current carrying element right so it is flowing like this and here this is on the infinite x axis and the observer is located here 3 comma 4 comma 0 so we know due to semi infinite is also you can consider it as a finite line current only the alpha 1 and alpha 2 values change so generally for any finite current what is the formula we got i by 4 pi rho into sin alpha 2 minus sin alpha 1 this is the formula right so in this case first of all you know what is the value of radial distance rho here so you know here the point is 3 comma 4 comma 0 so the radial distance will be straight away rho is equal to 3 so the first thing was the value of rho remains 3 can you reply in the chat box what is the value of alpha 1 and alpha 2 what is the value of alpha 1 and alpha 2 or otherwise let me explain pointedly so alpha 1 is 0 no 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 See here, this is a semi-infinite wire which is carrying from infinity to zero, right? This is your first current carrying element. So alpha one means angle made by the initial point with respect to the radial line. So you know that the initial point is at infinity. So how to represent the initial point when it is at infinity? I can draw a vertical line, and you need to measure the angle always towards the radial line. So this is your alpha one. so once the point is at infinity you can repeat the same thing with a vertical line so whatever the angle made by the initial point with respect to the radial line is alpha 1 and how to write alpha 2 the angle made by the final point with respect to the radial line so this is your final point for the first element right so this is your first element so draw a line from this final point to the observer and measure the angle with respect to radial axis so as i mentioned you always the arrow should be pointing to radial line now now you can tell me alpha 1 you are going to measure it in an anti clockwise manner so alpha 1 is going to be positive so sin alpha alpha 1 is going to be positive and it is plus 90 and you are going to measure alpha 2 in a clockwise so you are going to get alpha 2 is a negative quantity we'll find out what is the value so is the alpha 1 and alpha 2 clear for everyone or if you have any questions i will clarify it again very good yes right now what is the value of sin alpha 2 here so you know that this point is 3 comma 4 comma 0 so this distance is nothing but 3 and this distance is nothing but 4 so what is the value of this hypotenuse right now the hypotenuse will be 5 because there is a 90 degrees angle here 
So you can see here the value of sine alpha 1 is nothing but sine 90 is 1. Yeah, somebody is asking me to repeat. Okay. So first of all, if you want to measure alpha 1 and alpha 2, alpha 1 is the angle made by the initial point. Right now, the initial point is unknown. It is starting from the infinity point. So, so when you are trying to measure the initial point with respect to the radial line, you can represent with the vertical line. We have seen in the previous case. So when you draw the vertical line, the angle made by this initial point with respect to the radial line. So always the arrow should pointing towards the radial line. So that is what your alpha 1. Alpha 2 is the angle made by the final point. Because when you see the first element, this is your final point. So draw a line from the origin or you can say the draw a line from the final point to the observer and measure the angle with respect to the radial line. So you have to remember one second I was telling you alpha 1 is the angle made by initial point. Alpha 2 is the angle made by the final point. Always the angle should be pointing towards the radial line. Still any questions you have? Yeah, good. So then you come back to sin alpha 2 value right now. So you can see here sin, value, sin alpha 2 is nothing but the opposite side divided by the hypotenuse. So you can say sin alpha 2 is equal to 4 by 5. Of course minus because your alpha 2 is negative here. So I can say sin alpha 2 is minus 4 by 5. So you can substitute in the equation. So what you are going to get magnetic field intensity. So current is 8 ampere and the value of rho will be 3 and sin alpha 2 is minus 4 by 5 and sin alpha 1 is minus 1. So you can simplify that 8 by 4 pi into 3 into minus 9 by 5. So 4 2 times and 3 3 times. So you are going to get minus 6 by 5 pi. This is your magnitude. So let me call it as H1. What will be the direction right now here? The direction will be current into radial direction. So you can see here since the current is flowing from the positive y axis to 0. So the current direction will be something downwards. Downwards means it will be negative y direction. With what is the radial direction here? When you are moving from source to observer, you are moving in the direction of x. So this is your radial direction. So radial direction is x. So your ay cross ax will be minus az. So on minus. So your direction will be az cap. So net magnetic field intensity due to first current element is equal to minus 6 by 5 pi, 5 pi is the magnitude and the direction is az cap. So this is your first element. So you please take time and do it the same thing for the second wire. So this is your observer position right now. So can you tell me everybody what is the radial distance first thing? Tell me what is the radial distance. Good. Radial distance is 4. And tell me the value of alpha 1 and alpha 2. So the current is flowing in this direction. So tell me the value of alpha 1 and alpha 2. Alpha 1 is plus 90. No, no, no. You are not concentrating. You have to remember what do you mean by alpha 1 first of all? Alpha 1 is the angle made by initial point. Correct. This is your initial point. So draw a line from the initial point to here. And measure the angle with respect to radial line. This is your alpha 1. You are going, not going to get 90. Right. And what is your alpha 2? Alpha 2 is the angle made by the final point. You can see where is the final point here? The final point is on the infinity. So the final point you can represent with a vertical line. Alpha 2 is plus 90. No. Alpha 2 will be minus 90, right? 
so when you draw a vertical line and try to measure the angle towards the radial distance so this is your alpha 2 so you should remember always this point also you should remember the arrow should pointing to the radial line the arrow should pointing to the radial line amrish uh, you got the point yes sir yes sir got it yeah always you should measure the angle with respect to the radial line you should remember that now so there is a 90 degrees angle here and this radial distance you know that this will be 3 so what about this hypotenuse right now this is 5 so the first thing the value of rho will be 4 and alpha 1 is positive and alpha 2 is negative and it is 90 degrees let me verify somebody has already written the answer here verify so rho is equal to 4 and sin alpha 1 sin alpha 1 value you can see here you can see this triangle so sin alpha 1 is opposite side divided by hypotenuse so that will be 3 by 5 and sin alpha 2 will be 1 and of course alpha 2 is negative so you are you are going to get minus 1 so what is the magnetic field intensity i by 4 pi rho sin alpha 2 minus sin alpha 1 So you are going to get the current remains 8 divided by 4 pi into rho will be 4 sin alpha 2 is minus 1 and sin alpha 1 is 3 by 5. So what you are going to get 2 times and 2 2 times. So h2 is equal to 1 by 2 pi into minus 8 by 5. So which means that 4 by 5 pi. Of course there is a minus. So what will be the direction? Can you tell me the direction? So here the current is flowing along positive x direction. And what is the direction here? The radial direction means source to observer. So good. So source to observer, you are moving in the positive y direction, right? So current is x direction and the radial direction is y. So this will be az cap. So what is your h2 you are going to get finally? This will be minus 4 by 5 pi into az cap. So what is the magnetic field intensity due to the first wire you got? I forgot it. Can you, can anybody tell me in mic? What is the value we got due to h1? Minus 6 by 5 pi in AZ direction. Positive AZ. Okay, good. Right. So tell me what is the resultant value right now? H is equal to H1 plus H2. So when you are H1 plus H2, you are going to get minus 10 by 5 pi. So which is nothing but minus 2 by pi into AZ cap ampere per meter. So everybody at least got the procedure how to do and you need to do some work here everyone so because this is the first session you may be getting confused but i am keep on repeating the same word how you are measuring alpha 1 and alpha 2 More, not only you people they, i have i have taken classes for so many people they will always get confused so first for that only i have clearly mentioned yes sir we need to draw the triangle correctly Correct. First of all, you need to find out the initial point is making an angle of alpha 1. That point you have to remember. And the final point is makes an angle of alpha 2 as per our formula. So alpha 1 is the angle made by the initial point and alpha 2 is the angle made by the final point. The second step was very simple. Whenever you draw any angle, the arrow should be always pointing towards the radial line. If these two points, if you remember, you will never do mistake. So is it clear? Shall I go to the next question? Okay, this you try to do it now. 
So there is an infinitely extended wire which is lying along the x-axis and carrying a current of 4 amperes in the positive x-direction. So another infinitely extended wire is lying along the y-axis and carrying a current of 2 amperes in the positive y-direction. Then find the magnetic field intensity at 2, 1, 0. So first of all you take one by one. So first you take the first element. It is located along the x-axis, right? And carrying a current of 4 amperes. So first you see only that part and find the magnetic field intensity. So because it is an infinitely extended fire where the problem is simple. The formula will be I by 2 pi rho. That is the magnitude straight away. So let us see the first part. The first part is the wire is located along the x-axis. And the observer is located at 2, 1, 0. So what is the radial distance here? Can anybody say what is the radial distance? So the radial distance is nothing but this one only. The distance from the xy plane. So that is nothing but your 1. So this is your xy plane, right? So you can see here the radial distance will be straight away the value of 1. Okay. So you know that the magnetic field intensity due to the first element is equal to I by 2 pi rho. You can straight away supply, uh, substitute that. So the first current is carrying a current of 4 amperes. 4 divided by 2 pi into 1. So you are going to get 2 by pi. So what is the direction? So everybody try and reply the answer. What will be the direction? Very good. So current is positive x and the radial direction is y. So you are going to get the magnetic field intensity in z direction. So this is your first contribution to magnetic field. So do the same thing for the second one. So the second one is carrying the current along the y-axis. And of course he has given plus y direction. So the second one is carrying the current along positive y direction. And this is of 2 ampere. And your observer is here. So what is the value of rho here? Rho is equal to 2. So directly substitute. So H2 is equal to current is 2 divided by 2 pi. Rho is also equal to 2. So you are going to get 1 by 2 pi. Right. So what will be the direction now? Good. Very good. So current is in positive y and the radial direction is negative x. Sorry, radial direction is positive x. Current is in a y and the radial direction is in x. So you are get h2 is equal to 1 by 2 pi into minus az cap. So finally you can add it together h1 plus h2. So the resultant magnetic field is equal to H1 plus H2. So 1 will be 2 by pi into AZ cap minus 1 by 2 pi into AZ cap. So you can uh, multiply the first term with 2 and 2 so that it will be clear. So you are going to get 3 by 2 pi into AZ cap. So to make the denominator common for the first time I multiplied in the uh, divided with 2. So 2 pi will be common and this will be 4 minus 1. So the answer will be 3 by 2 pi into az cap. Clear? So see the next problem, last one. So find the magnetic field intensity at the center of the square loop of current I flowing in the clockwise direction that is located in Z equal to 0 plane with the side D. Okay. So there is a square. So the current flowing in a square loop and something like this in the clockwise direction. So the current is flowing in the clockwise direction like this. And you need to find out what is the magnetic field intensity at the center of the loop. 
so first of all all of you everybody consider this is consider as a combination of four finite line current so let me try to analyze like that and in all the current elements the same current is flowing so whatever the current flowing is nothing but i so first of all you take the current element i and find out what is the magnetic field due to this one at this observer then we'll do it for 2 3 and 4 separately so first of all what is the magnetic field intensity formula we can write down i by 4 pi rho into sin alpha 2 minus sin alpha 1 so what you have to do it now for the first current element what is the value of rho here first thing not only here whatever the current element you take what is the value of rho here so when you are at the center of the line your radial distance will be half of the distance right good so your rho will be d by 2 straight away and current is same as i so for the first wire you tell me what is the value of alpha 1 and alpha 2 please take time no problem but tell me the correct answer with respect to the first current element what will be the value of alpha 1 and alpha 2 plus alpha 1 is plus 45 and alpha 2 is minus 45 no hurry you do it slowly no problem you correct please correct yourself so once again telling alpha 1 is the angle made by the initial point and the arrow should be pointing to radial line so this is your alpha 1 alpha 2 is the angle made by the final point and the angle should be measured with respect to radial line now you got so which is positive which is negative right now so alpha 1 is negative you are measuring the angle in a anti clockwise so clockwise here so alpha 2 alpha 1 you are measuring clockwise so it will be negative and alpha 2 is an anti clockwise so you know that since it is an Uh, this line is exactly bifurcating this angle so this will be 45 this will be 45 and since this is 90 so this angle should be 45 so alpha 1 is clockwise means the angle should be negative minus 45 and alpha 2 is anti clockwise so that is positive and plus 45 degrees and can you tell me for the second one similarly everyone do it for the second wire first thing when you are doing it for the second wire first draw the radial line okay. so this is your radial line and this is the initial point and this is the final point so can you tell me what is the value of alpha 1 and alpha 2 very good very good so alpha 1 is nothing but same thing angle drawn from the initial point so this is your alpha 1 and draw a line from the final point so this is your alpha 2 so here also you are going to get alpha 1 equal to minus 45 and alpha 2 is equal to plus 45 so do it for the third and fourth so you can do it for the third and fourth so when you are considering third one draw a radial line and draw a line from the initial point to this one so this is your alpha one and draw a line from the final point to the observer measure the angle with respect to radial line so is it same thing or not same good so your alpha one and alpha two are getting repeated for each line the same thing you are going to get so similarly even if you see for the fourth wire so this initial point you can see here alpha 1 is clockwise and alpha 2 is the final point here and it is anti clockwise so alpha 1 is minus 45 and alpha 2 is plus 45 so for all the lines 
for alpha 1 and alpha 2 remain same and the current remain same and the radial distance remain same so what i can say here first due to the first current element you calculate so the total magnetic field is nothing but 4 times of h1 so first calculate the magnetic field due to current element and since alpha 1 alpha 2 everything remains same and the radial distance same and the current also same so the total magnetic field will be 4 times of that so first calculate h1 then multiply with 4 so what is the value of h1 right now so i divided by 4 pi rho is nothing but d by 2 so sin alpha 2 alpha 2 is positive so you are going to get 1 by root 2 minus so al sin alpha 1 alpha 1 is negative so you are going to get minus of that so finally it will become plus so h1 is equal to i by 2 pi d into 2 by root 2 so you are going to get i by root 2 into pi d so the total magnetic field what you are going to get is nothing but 4 times of h1 so 4 times of h1 so that is equal to 4 i divided by root 2 pi d so you can simplify this you are going to get 2 root 2 i by pi into d so option a is correct now this is as per the magnitude is concerned can you verify the direction suppose you consider this is in the x direction and this is in the y direction will the direction is also going to be in the same thing or not you verify you take for the first wire you take for the first wire tell me what is the current by considering this is x and this is y tell me the direction of magnetic field You can directly multiply with 4 times provided the direction also remains same. That you need to keep it in mind. So due to first wire, uh, you can uh, somebody is writing minus z. So you can verify for the others also, second, third and fourth. Is it coming same or different? So for the first wire, current is flowing in the positive y and the radial direction is positive x. So you are going to get negative z. Whereas if you take the second wire, current is flowing in the positive x and the radial direction is minus y. So you are going to get negative z only. So similarly for the third wire, the current is flowing in the y direction, which means negative y. And the radial direction is negative x. So finally you are going to get negative z only. So similarly for the fourth wire, current is flowing in the negative y, sorry, negative x, and the radial direction is y. So you are going to get negative z. So that is the reason what if you if the current is flowing in a square loop everything the net magnetic field intensity at the center is four times of this one the reason was because the direction also remains same alpha 1 and alpha 2 also remain same due to each current element so that's it i think now so if you have any questions you can discuss now so now you understood how is the procedure clear right now alpha 1 and alpha 2 at least now yes sir yes good so what you can do you go through the theory part right now whatever i have uploaded in the drive so uh, some more problems i will try to include it in the assignment so i'm going to send an assignment special assignment for this magnetostatics part so before that you go through the theory, then only you can try to solve the assignment. Then you will get more confidence on that. Fine. So if you are interested, one question I will give you, you try to do it by the next class. Okay. So I have a current carrying element, something like this. Uh, so which is infinitely extending from the negative y axis, so y axis, positive y axis. And the current is diverting here like this on the x-axis. So this is on the negative y-axis. And here this is my positive x-axis. 
and this is the current which is i flowing here so the current is entering from infinity point on the positive y axis and reaching the origin and it get diverted here okay and again it get diverted here diverted here and again it coming here so i want to find out what is the magnetic field intensity at this point so consider this distance is d so what will happen this point will become 0 comma minus d by 2 comma 0 right so when the current is flowing from infinity on the positive y axis reaching the origin here and it is diverted onto the x axis at a distance of d and again coming back here and it is flowing on the negative x axis and again it is flowing onto the negative y axis so is the configuration clear now i want to find out what is the magnetic field intensity at this point so this you try to do it by the next class so that you you can if you are able to do this problem means you, you it's it shows that you have been understood all the concepts so first of all is the question clear for everybody so the current starts from plus infinity point on the y axis reaching the origin gets diverted onto the positive x axis for a distance of d and again getting diverted towards the negative y axis for a distance d and then it is changing back again to the negative x axis for the same distance d and then it will move on to the negative y axis infinitely so is the question clear for everybody right now yes yeah. you take time no problem and uh, i need the answer by the next class and whoever has done the answer for this one you try to put the answers in the whatsapp group okay so you please share the answers in the whatsapp group so that everybody can see okay then fine uh, so the next class maybe from the next week we had three sessions per week that is on wednesday friday and sunday we are going to have the classes so each two hours class yeah yes and one more thing i would like to know how many triple e students are here just reply here triple e electrical one two okay so only two people are there right for a triple e right that's fine for triple e people the syllabus uh, i already told you in the past so there is another 6 hours of lecture is there for triple e so which means by next sunday wednesday friday and sunday that will be the last session for triple e hopefully and after that it will be continued only for the ec so ec is having still lot of topics to discuss so triple e scope is limited there up to that point so my point is all the electrical students you try to practice whatever we have discussed in the classroom so if you have any questions try to get it clarified before the next weekend itself right okay then we can sign off then fine okay. have a nice weekend bye thank you sir